Hello everyone, Jason Cooper here from Kickstarted. I'm here with a special guest. Uh, his name is Elliot Landy. He's a photographer based out of Woodstock, New York. And he has just launched his first Kickstarter campaign uh, for a photography book of pictures that he took of the band um, throughout his career. And so, Elliot, why don't you tell us a little bit about the project so we can sort of share that with everyone. Well, I photographed the band in 1968 and 1969 during the time of their first two albums. I photographed them for the first two album jackets. And uh, it was uh, somewhat the um, uh, music from Big Pink, which was uh, their first album, was my first album assignment, actually. Very cool. I'm just curious as a music fan and someone who loves the band, how did you meet them? How did that relationship start? Well, uh, I talk about it in my book, which is called Woodstock Vision, The Spirit of a Generation. And um, um, I was um, taking photographs of peace demonstrations and uh, to help try and stop the Vietnam War, working with underground newspapers. And in those years, um, uh, rock and roll music was part of the underground culture. And all the rock and roll musicians that I ever encountered were against the war and were very vocal about it. So um, uh, when I began photographing these concerts at the Fillmore East, um, feeling like whenever I was showing how beautiful and groovy these times were and the concerts were, that it was um, inviting people to join the movement, to join the counterculture, to become part of a new way of living, a new way of thinking, a new way of being, let's say, which is what the 60s counterculture was about, was saying that money is not the all-important thing in life and the fact that we respect each other and treat each other well and share with each other. And um, I also needed to make money during those years. I had I needed to make money during these years too, but I also needed to make money. I was just wanting to start out and as a career, as a photographer, I had decided that's what I wanted to be. That's how I wanted to earn money was from something I loved very much, which was taking pictures. So I would go around to, after, whenever I would take pictures of whether it was peace demonstrations or, or concerts, I would go around to people, to magazines who might use those pictures and pay me for them. And one of the um, uh, bands I photographed very early on was Janis Joplin with Big Brother and Holding Company. And I went up to her manager, who was Albert Grossman. Albert Grossman managed Bob Dylan, Richie Havens, Peter, Paul and Mary, and also came to manage the band. Um, so when I went up to Albert, they, they remembered me as a kind of long, funny sh I won't go into that now. And one, one night at a um, uh, concert, uh, a Janis Joplin, Big Brother and the Holy Company concert at a club called Generation, which became Electric Ladyland Studio in New York City, Albert came up to me and asked me if I was doing anything the next week, if I'd be able to take some pictures of a new group they had. And I said to him, well, what's their name? What's the name of the group? You know, and he said, they don't have a name yet. And he said, well, we're thinking about maybe the Crackers or he or something else. He says, we don't know. Maybe they won't even have a name. And so then I went up, uh, I said, and I was free, luckily for me. Um, and I went up to a recording studio in Manhattan and I met with Robbie and a few of the other guys and showed them some pictures. And that started it really. That, that was the beginning. That's fantastic. Well, uh, <laughs> and I saw some of your pictures and anyone who's interested in, in, the band or the 60s and sort of that, that era of music should check out your project again, which is on Kickstarter now. I want to ask you, so you've had this, you've been sitting on this material and presumably you've been photo a photographer, you've written books and published your work for a long time. What made you decide to do a crowdfunding campaign? I thought that crowdfunding would be the easiest way that I could get this book and other books published. Um, I've had about six books published, six monographic books over the years. And each one was very difficult to secure the deal and then to make the deal and to discuss uh, what was going to happen with it, how many pages and so on and so forth. So over the years, I'd gone to um, uh, book expos like the Franklin Book Fair, the American Booksellers Association, uh, written uh, n numerous 
publishing companies and so on. And I'm somewhat known for my work. I, you know, a lot of people know my work and in the publishing business know me because I've contacted a lot of people. And it was just frustration in a way. And, and getting the deal is more work than doing the book, actually, or close to that. It's more work because I already have the pictures taken. So I just decided I'll try Kickstarter. I knew that that um, there's a following for the band and there's a following for my photographs and I have a large mailing list from being on the internet and doing email for 12, 15 years now. And uh, so I have a big mailing list and I thought, I'll try it. There's The only cost for Kickstarter is the time you have to put into creating the project, which was actually considerable effort to make it, to make it work, uh, I think. I did a, uh, um, a good job. I'm happy with what I created. It took us a long time. I'm working with a woman named Rachel Dopkin, who'll be thrilled that I mentioned her name. She, she's a musician herself. She's a young young woman, 24 years old. Um, and she loves the band. And that's, that's, that's how we met. <laughs> um, and so she, she and I just worked on creating the Kickstarter project and figuring out what would be nice for people. And I tried to make it so um, anyone that gave over a certain amount of money or gave money was getting something back. The lowest level I set was $25. And for $25, I'm creating a, a special card that they be able to frame. It'll have a picture on it, and I'm going to sign it. So it'll be a little object that, that people can frame. I'm going to sign each one personally. I'm going to make sure it's printed beautifully. Um, I'll have a picture of the band on it and so on, a pic picture of the book rather, with the band cover and so on. Um, what, what, has your been, what has been your you know, take on crowdfunding as a, as a model for moving forward? I think forward? it's fabulous. I, I think that uh, what the 60s was about um, was pushing aside the gatekeepers, pushing aside the people that defined what life was about, pushing aside the banks that controlled the money. So crowdfunding is actually, excuse me, um, a continuation or a direct continuation of what the 60s purpose or goal was about is to uh, allow people to do their own thing and to live from it. So if somebody likes what I want to do, they'll contribute some money as, as I would for somebody else's thing. Very cool. Well, I'm glad that that's been your experience. And I wonder, sort of my big question for you is, Based on the success you've had, you've raised over a hundred thousand dollars against, I think, what was like a forty thousand dollar goal. No, the, the the goal, the stated goal was sixty five thousand, but that was really too little, especially now that uh, I'm I'm getting into the real nitty gritty of what it's going to cost to do this. But um, my, uh, but I've I've raised more than I would have asked for. Uh, sixty five was too little, but I, it wouldn't have had to be. It's now around one hundred thirty three, I think. Um, so yeah, so, so anyway, I raised twice as much as what I asked for and I could have done it for what I asked for. It just would have been a more, uh, a financial struggle. Well then I'm glad it's very successful. And I wonder then at the question as someone that's done it both ways, a more traditional me method where you've gone to, you know, a publisher and, or, and got money that way. Is this a better model for you moving forward? If you publish another book, will you use crowdfunding again? I hope so, yeah. It's a much better model. Number one, I'll get more money this way than I would from an advance from a publisher, and it will allow me to um, to do the book. Um, I'm, I'm, uh, my situation is a little bit different from a lot of other people, is that I own very high-end scanning and printing equipment and, and high-end computers, so I can create um, final digital files to do a fine art book, um, but you don't necessarily one doesn't necessarily have to do a quote un, a quote fine art book unquote a fine art quote <laughs> book, uh, but uh, because I love the visual element of photography as opposed to only what the photograph shows. For me, the the visual aspect, the painter. The painterliness of it is as important as the content of it. Um, so I, I'm going for the fine art version of it, and that's what this book is going to be. And I've gotten inquiries from three or four publishers, say one, two, three, I say four publishers, who want to take this further. 
and I expect that we will see a regular trade edition that I won't be publishing. Um, but the version I'm publishing will be a totally gorgeous, beautifully printed book, um, as best as I can make it look. And um, a trade edition could be that. Depends who does it. There are beautiful, beautiful fine art books published by some of the companies or by one company, two companies that approach me. Uh, so anyway, we'll see. You know. Well, that's but. that's exciting. I you know I love to hear the kind of stories of of people discovering a new way to use crowdfunding. Uh, and uh, I think that your book is fantastic. I plan on backing it uh, shortly. Oh, thank you. Um, it's just because I'm a huge I fan of the it. band and your work. It's amazing. So uh, thank, thank you for joining us. Best of luck with the rest of your campaign. And uh, we'll catch you next time. Thanks uh, for watching Funded Friday. <laughs>